This show does not constitute legal advice and is for educational purposes only. We are always available to field questions. However, until you have entered into a written agreement, your communications are not confidential and we are not acting on your behalf. Hi, I'm Sarah Holland and welcome to Man vs. Land. This is our reboot of Man vs. Land and I am so excited to reintroduce you to this amazing show. This segment is intended to educate the public on various home and land ownership topics as discussed with guests who serve as experts in those fields. We have an amazing lineup of guests, everything from lending to solar and market updates that are coming to you here from Pemi Baker TV. We started this show in 2016 and we are bringing it back fresh and Look at my background, this is amazing. So excited to be here and to be able to chat with you about all of these super important topics that as consumers, we probably don't have an awareness of. So who am I and why am I even doing this? Well, my name again is Sarah Holland. I am a licensed real estate professional. I have been in the industry for over a decade right here in central New Hampshire. I'm also a real estate pre-licensing instructor, meaning I teach and instruct those new real estate licensees that are coming into the field, the basics, the bottom, information that they need to learn in order to practice and represent you effectively out into the out in the field. I'm also a real estate investor um, and I work on the public policy side of things down in Concord um, pr protecting and promoting private property rights with the New Hampshire Association of Realtors. So that's a little bit about me. You'll probably learn a lot more about me throughout this show but that is we, where we are going to start. So to drop back into the market to real estate to give you guys kind of uh, just an overview to bring you up to speed as to what it is um, that is happening out there right now. There's been a lot of talk on the news. Um, there is a lot of talk at the coffee shop as to what is happening. So let me break it down. Not much has changed in the last couple of years. So we had through COVID, we had um, an acceleration of this low inventory market. And when I say an acceleration, it means we were already seeing prices appreciating prior to COVID. And we've been noticing that there has not been enough inventory. The demand is really high, which creates that competition, supply and demand that we all learned about in school, right? So that continued, it accelerated through COVID where we had folks that were realizing, hey, listen, I'm, I'm of the age, I have the income to be able to move out of home or my rental apartment to purchase something on my own because we were finding that the spaces that we were in during COVID may have been a little too small. Maybe there weren't too many people in these spaces. Maybe we just needed more space. So folks were pushed into this market and that created a lot of buyer demand where we had two different groups of folks, which we've previously talked about, looking for the same type of inventory, okay? We have folks who are looking to downsize, whose family have kind of like flown the nest and they were looking for something that is a little bit more, um, uh, I would say economical, or um, less to maintain in order to move into their retirement years so they can enjoy their life, right? Not, not solely focused on maintaining a larger home. So those folks were in the market as well as the first time home buyers. Those two folks, those two categories of buyers were looking for the same type of property which we simply did not have enough of. So affordable, move-in ready, um, easy to maintain properties here in both central New Hampshire and the entire state, and quite frankly, the entire country. This information that I'm sharing now is not specific to New Hampshire. It is affecting everyone throughout the country. So we had the low inventory piece. We had super demand, which came from low inventory. Um, but right now we have some slowing of those prices. Remember those prices went up over the last couple of years since COVID. So, oh my gosh, that's like over three years now. Um, so COVID's prices kept going. And then we had that, in, that interest rate that also, um, that started hiking up. So that 
gave a bit of a pause into the market where folks were like, mm, I don't know that I want to afford a price at or a uh, a mortgage at this price with this interest rate, I'm gonna wait until things cooled. It did help this, this you know, talking about the Fed and, and com government influences, um, it gave people a pause, right? They wanted to slow things down, they wanted to slow down the appreciation, so then they hiked the interest rates, hoping that that would happen, and it absolutely did a little bit, but it didn't solve our demand issue. We definitely still have that. So right now, low inventory, Prices have slowed, interest rates have come down and slowed from that high 8%, 8 plus eight percent that we saw in the last year, which is all good things for buyers who are coming into the market and also for sellers who are going to sell their home but also go back into the market as buyers, right? So that's what also is kind of having a bit of a pause or a little bit of a stall in the market right now because sellers don't want to leave their house because what if they can't find anything else to move into? What do you need to know going into the spring market? In the spring market, we are going to still have the COVID demand. We have not created nearly enough new units to handle the supply that happens to be out there. Um, there have been several studies in the state of New Hampshire that have determined that in the next decade, we need 40,000 new units to meet the demand that we have today. So that is, I have three kids, they're all adults. If they, that's three additional units when they leave my house that they are going to have to move into when they go out into the world with their own families or friends or whatever the case may be. So this is not necessarily folks that are moving into New Hampshire from other states. I know that that's a concern by a lot of folks, um, but it also includes the people who have were born here and went to school here and live here, and now they're just leaving the nest and they need a place of their own to go to. So it's a lot of different things. New Hampshire has always been um, a tourist uh, state, and we love our tourism here in New Hampshire. It brings a lot of economic value to our state, but we also need to provide additional housing, okay? All right, in the market, going into that strong market in spring, if you're buying, have a strategy. Make sure that you assemble your home ownership team to make sure that you are prepared to go into battle for your new home. If you're a seller, also have a strategy, right? Start chatting with your real estate team, whoever that may be, especially if you're gonna go and buy on the other side of your sale, because that is a very strategic move. It is very delicate, especially in a market like this. So you wanna have those conversations early and be ready for anything to happen because in this market update i'm just talking about where things are today next week it could be completely different next month wildly different market so you always want to be able to pivot and have those resources all right since i gave you kind of the basics on the market which is a little bit more of the same i want to talk about some property ownership basics and these are going to be things that are going to be Topics that folks have asked me about um, that I'm constantly educating others on and, and really you should not feel embarrassed to ask anyone because you're the consumer. So maybe I'll start with that. As the consumer in the real estate space, you drive the bus. You have choice in absolutely everything. You can choose your real estate professional, you can choose your lender, you can choose your attorney, title company, home inspector, soup to nuts. Everything is your choice. It can be difficult sometimes if you find yourself in a situation where you no longer trust the parties that you have chosen, just remember that you have choice, okay? You can go ahead and pivot at any point um, understanding that there may be some consequences, of course, if you've signed contracts and those types of things, but you have choice, okay? The first thing that I wanna chat about is, let's talk about real estate agents. We'll go there first, because we're talking about consumer choice. And our licensing, so I am a professional real estate licensee, 
And when I say licensee, I mean someone that is licensed by the state of New Hampshire to operate in the real estate space. That license is provided to me by a consumer protection agency, the New Hampshire Real Estate Commission. They operate under the rules and regulations that are provided to them by the New Hampshire State Legislature. So all of this is a very public process and it is there to protect the consumer. All of the laws and regulations that I operate under, including my education, my licensing, um, how to engage a client and how I would represent them, is all laid out um, in rules and regulations. That being said, you also have a place to lodge complaints, right? So I am a New Hampshire real estate licensee. New Hampshire has two different forms of licenses. We have the broker license and then we have the salesperson license. Who needs to be licensed as a real estate licensee? Anyone who helps another in buying or selling real estate with the expectation of getting paid or actually getting paid. And payment does not necessarily mean money. It could be a vacation or an exchange of house cleaning or whatever the case may be, right? So anyone who is engaged in helping others buy or sell real estate for a fee has to have a real estate license. Okay, so that's first step. Now we have the broker's license and we have the salesperson's license and that is a matter of education and responsibility. And then we have the realtor. And a lot of folks just say all licensees are realtors and that is not the case. A realtor is actually a licensee, so a licensed salesperson or broker in the state of New Hampshire, um, who is a member of a professional trade organization called the National Association of Realtors. So this is an opt-in. And the National Association of Realtors has state and local chapters um, that we would belong to. I am a realtor. I am a member of the National Association of Realtors as well as the New Hampshire Association of Realtors. Um, and that is a choice of mine as well. Okay. So that's information, basic information that consumer needs to know. When you first meet with a real estate professional, they are going to present to you what is called the brokerage relationship disclosure form. And this is a document that outlines your rights as a consumer and your rights as a client if you choose to sign a real a agency or representation contract with a real estate professional. And it also outlines all the different types of relationships that you can have with a real estate professional. So if your, life, your real estate agent is not providing this to you at the first business meeting, then certainly ask them for it because you have a right to have it. It's a disclosure, it is not a contract, but they may ask you to sign it and that's okay. You're just signing in receipt of that document. All right, so that's who we are as real estate agents and really just scratching the surface. Everybody gets to um, determine how they wish to do their business and who they wish to work with. Um, I am not obligated to take all clients um, as, as I shouldn't be obligated to. <laughs> so just know um, you have choice and we have choice as well. Um, so it's really in finding the best fit because the best success comes from having a good working relationship with your real estate team. All right, that's the real estate agent portion of things. Now let's jump into a super hot topic right now is property taxes. So property taxes can be, oh, they can raise your blood pressure, absolutely. Just a little basic information, your property taxes are built on the budget of the state education, the county, the school, your local school, and your municipal budget. So there are four buckets that go into that, okay? And then, you know, without getting too much into the weeds, um, there's an inventory of land that is determined for your municipality that is kind of applied to these four budgets. It creates the tax rate for the town, and that is what is applied to your valuation of your property. All property in a municipality has to regularly be um, updated as far as the valuation goes, and that's by an assessor. 
which is not an appraiser, um, although they do very similar duties. And it's important to note that money raised through taxation cannot be more than what those budgets allow, okay? And those budgets are all open to the public. They have budget hearings for the town, which you're going to go to soon with your town meetings. They have budget meetings for the local school. You are absolutely welcome to go and participate in those meetings. And sometimes we get disconnected if we no longer have kids in the school system, but it, most towns, that is the largest portion of your tax bill. So it's really important that you are engaged in that, okay? The county budgets and the state education budgets, those are also part of, um, part of a public process that you can certainly weigh in on as well. The Department of uh, Revenue Administration has a lovely website where you can download um, or look at the tax rate for each specific town and see how much is in each one of those budgets or is allocated in each one of those budgets. So you have an idea of where you really should be spending your time and being engaged in this process, okay? Most often these tax bills are paid twice a year or issued twice a year. They can be a little confusing. So the tax bills, if it comes out on January 1st, it is three months in arrear and three months going forward. Um, the same thing for the July 1st tax bill, three months in arrear and three months going forward. Because we don't like to make anything super simple here in New Hampshire, live free or die. Um, the first bill of the year is a guesstimate based on last year's information. And then the second bill, which can be higher or lower, is makes up any difference if they guesstimated incorrectly on the first bill. So that makes up any difference going forward. So understanding kind of how that process works um, can be very helpful in how to navigate taxation in your local community, okay? If you find in this process, if maybe your property has had a revaluation, um, which you would be notified about, there is a process for dispute and it's a very regimented process in how you go about disputing the valuation or the tax bill associated with your property. And it kind of starts now. It starts in the beginning of the year and you have to meet certain um, timeline benchmarks in order for it to move forward in the process. Look to your town or to um, some resources online that can help you with that process. Feel free to reach out to me. I'm happy to provide those resources as well. All right, trying to keep everybody's blood pressure a little bit lower with the taxation talk, we're gonna move on um, to selling your property yourself. We talked about earlier that as, um, as someone who helps others buy and sell real estate, you need to have a license. You can certainly sell your own real estate or purchase your own real estate without representation. However, it's super important for you to know that there are rules that apply to this process that you are not immune from if you are doing this by yourself. And the two that are come to mind that are super important are disclosure rules. In the state of New Hampshire, you have to disclose specific information to buyers in writing um, prior to the execution of a purchase and sales agreement. So those disclosures need to happen regardless of whether you have a real estate licensee involved in the process. And the other is fair housing. Fair housing, you may have heard um, in, we have a whole fair housing month. Um, fair housing has to do with discrimination and the buying and selling and renting of real property. This indicates that you cannot discriminate based on protected classes. This is a federal law. New Hampshire has its own law that mirrors but also adds additional protected classes. And everyone in a real estate transaction has to follow fair housing. So me as a licensee, you as a buyer and seller, the um, lender, the title agent or the attorney, everyone in the process has to follow fair housing. So discrimination should not be a thing in a real estate transaction, but if you find that you are, 
um, discriminated against in some way, that there is some recourse for you, okay? In New Hampshire, you can contact the Human Rights Association um, and uh, Housing and Urban Development on the federal side of things, okay? All right, so now we know kind of where we stand in a real estate transaction, whether it's having a home, uh, a real estate team associated with that. And when I say team, I mean your lender, your title company, your home inspector, whatever the case may be. And now we're like moving into what does either party have to do in a real estate transaction? Well, as I said before, we live in New Hampshire. Live free or die. <laughs> so nobody has to do anything in a real estate transaction aside from the few disclosure rules and treating folks um, respectfully, fairly, and um, transparently in a transaction. So New Hampshire is a buyer beware state which means as a buyer, you need to do your due diligence and you cannot rely on the information of a seller or lack of information from a seller. So when I say buyer beware, it means that you need to do your due diligence. You're gonna trust the information that's provided to you, but you're gonna verify it, right? You wanna make sure you're not just taking someone's word for it, you're actually going to be going through the process of investigating, right? Making sure if you're buying a piece of property that you want to develop or that you want to be able to maybe have farm animals on or animals in general, is that allowable in a lot of different ways, right? Um, you're gonna research the deed and make sure that there are no restrictions. You are going to look into the town zoning for wh what zone that property is in to make sure that there are no restrictions or that they're void of the restrictions that it, you know, that would limit what it is that you would like to do on the property. Um, you're also gonna look into a lot of other things like easements, who has access to your property or can pass through the property. Can, um, can you get insurance on the property in a manner in which it makes sense, right? Um, is it in a flood zone? Is it, is it prone to some other habit, ha hazards, so sorry, um, other hazards that you may wanna look into? And then also you want to see if you can get an inspection on that property. In New Hampshire, unlike some of our other neighboring states, inspections are not a right of the buyer. Um, I would love for that to be the case from the buyer's agent standpoint, so it becomes an item that's no longer negotiated in a transaction because you're walking into that property for 15, 20, 30 minutes, deciding you wanna buy it, having no information on the property whatsoever. So if you would like to have a home inspection, I always encourage you to do so. That is the time that you will learn more about that property and how to go about maintaining it and creating this checklist of repairs or items that you wanna upgrade going forward. But just know that in New Hampshire, there is no inspection by right. Everything in a transaction is also negotiable. Um, properties coming on the market, they don't have to be in good repair. Um, they don't have to pass an inspection or an appraisal or any of those things. If the seller is fully aware and fully discloses those items and the buyer goes in eyes wide open, yeah, that property can certainly transfer hands. So if you, especially in this market where there are um, few properties for sale and lots of buyers that are interested in them, make sure you have a really good strategy, right? Because getting a house just for the sake of getting a house may not be the best move. And we've actually seen some of that come to fruition in the last couple of years where during COVID folks were buying houses just to get into them. A year later, they were selling them because it wasn't a good fit for them. It just was the only option. So I always like to say that if the house is for you, you will have the house. And if it's not for you, then someone else will have the house. So trust the process for whatever reason. If it does not end up being your house, then the one is out there somewhere. 
All right, so we've talked a little bit about the market and we've talked about kind of how do you set yourself up for success and, and kind of assembling your real estate team. And along those lines, let's talk about like the big um, elephant in the room when it comes to the real estate industry currently, and that is how do we get paid as a real estate agent? And getting paid as a real estate agent, it's really a pay to play industry. So my clients will pay me, the other agent's clients will pay them. There are opportunities for those fees to be offset by contributions from the other side. But as a buyer or a seller, you are going to expect to pay for your own representation. And that only makes sense, right? Because they are, your agent is going to protect and promote your best interest throughout the real estate transaction. We're going to educate you along the way about the pros and cons of every decision that you're going to make, provide you resources and other entities to talk to so you can make the best decision for yourself going forward. And it does not matter what we think, or how we feel about the transaction in general, we're there specifically to promote your best interest. And paying somebody to do that for you is, is worth its weight in gold because everything is fine until it's not. And when it's not okay is when you need that representation, okay? So happy to chat about this more. I, I always love talking about this whole commission thing. You may have seen a lot of stuff in the news relative to some lawsuits and yada yada. And historically, it's always been this way. It's been pay to play. But we as an industry have not been great about sharing our value. And when we don't share our value, we just say, hey, buyer agency is free. And that's not been the case. So now we have that has caught up to us. And as an industry, we are now forced by some of these lawsuits that have come out to be transparent about this. And in my practice, I have been transparent um, very from very early on because I saw this kind of coming down the pike and it also just didn't feel good to tell people something was free and have somebody else pay me for it. So, um, so just know as consumers going forward, this is going to be very transparent in the industry and you ha it's something that you have to budget for it, okay? I would love to share, probably in a different episode going forward, um, folks have a lot of questions about how to get into the real estate industry um, because it may seem easy, um, easy money and not a ton of work. And I will tell you those things are false. It is not easy money and it is a ton of work and I work incredibly hard for my clients. Um, and I think, but I think that it's really important for you to understand how to get into the industry if you're interested. So we'll probably do that in another episode. With that being said, I do want to encourage you to reach out to me ask me questions. I am an open book. Um, if we do not have a representation agreement, then we can't consider the, co the conversation confidential, but grab me at the coffee shop. Grab me at the bank and ask me questions. I am more than willing to answer questions for all of you because the more information that you have, the better we are in this real estate space together. Um, and also, if there are topics that you're interested in learning here on Man vs. Land, please reach out. Send us an email. We also have a Facebook page. Um, you can comment on our videos on YouTube, and we would love to bring on any guests. And if you happen to be someone who wants to be a guest on the show, let us know that as well. We would be happy to bring you on. And with that, I would like to say welcome back to Man vs. Land, the reboot on Pemi Baker TV. My name is Sarah Holland, and I look forward to seeing you all in the next episode. Thank you so much.